All right, so here's the nice thing about section 7.6 is the process used is almost the same process we use for stuff we've already been doing. So it kind of feels very familiar. Um, and the kind of problem we're going to look at in 7.6 is something like this here. Now, again, just like the ones we just did the, from 7 5, the complex fractions, the fractions inside a fraction, right? Like an like a evil Russian nesting doll. Fractions inside a fraction. Um, since I had two sides on this problem, I could multiply by the LCD and kill the fractions. So, this problem, does it have two sides? Yes. Yes, it's an equation, it's got two sides. So, I'm completely allowed to multiply both sides by anything I want to except zero. And in this case, I would multiply both sides by the LCD because it's going to kill the fractions just like it did in 7, 5. You with me? So the process is almost exactly the same. The only difference is I'm supposed to end up with some answers, right? I've got to get x equals something. Now tell me, right before we do any actual solving work, can anybody tell me what x can definitely not be? Plus one. Careful, x can't be what? One. One. Minus eight. Minus eight. Good. Because how do you think this guy factors? Yeah. It's minus one. It's plus one. Yeah. So you gotta like that, right? You gotta get a lot of that. So if you're not sure how something factors, just look around. I'm not gonna say it's gonna happen all the time. It's gonna happen about 98 percent of the time. So just look around. So this is definitely gonna be the other parts that I see. Okay. So far, so good. So if at the end of all this work, I get x equals one. As the answer, I've got to throw it out, and there's no solution. The only possible solution would freak it out. I'd have to throw it out. It's what you call extraneous <laughs> solutions. It's where you go, math, what's wrong with you? But it's not math's fault, and I'll show you why here in a minute. Um, so, so remind me again, after all that crap I talked about with this, what do I do to start this off? Good. And, and I'll tell you this. Here's a kind of, even to make it more... Familiar. There's two main ways to do this. The way that I kind of recommend is to give the people that are missing something what they're missing. Because that really feels familiar, right? So what's he missing? X plus A. X plus A. What's he missing? X minus one. X minus one. Now look, the minute I do that, what's really cool now, if I multiply by the LCD, it just directly kills all the bottoms, because all the bottoms are the LCD, you with me? So if I multiply by what? Yeah, x plus 8, x minus 1, it's going to cancel with all those. So somebody help me out, what's left? 2x plus 16. Good, 2x plus 16 plus x equals 4x minus 4. That's, that's kick ass. Right, make all the bottoms the same, multiply by that because it's an equation I'm allowed to, and then you end up with something that looks like math 9. Maybe then the math 88. Right. So, and then how do you, so how do you keep going here? 3x plus 16. Minus 3x plus 4. So minus 3x, add 4, I like it. One equals x. Is that okay? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, not one of these. As, as at least not one of these. I don't know if I actually did all that right. Hopefully, I did. I could put a twenty in. I don't feel like doing it. Yeah. So just to clarify, when you make the denominators the same, you know, the add the x plus eight, you just forget about that after that. Because I I'm allowed to multiply both sides by the LCD. Okay. So they do go away. Okay. Because I do that. Right. So you're cool. canceling them out. Basically. Canceling them out. Okay. If that equals part wasn't there, 
I couldn't cancel it out, right? right. I can't just get rid of a fraction sitting there all by itself, right? Oh, we got some. Okay, good, good. Um, that, that's, that's really all there is to it. Let me give you a couple to try. So you guys try this one here. Um, should I take one out of here? Guys, what's the first step here? Factors. Okay. Now find your Multiply by what's missing. Yeah, I get So give everybody what they're missing. Right, so this guy's missing. X X X y. So now if I multiply by. Cancel everywhere. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. So then I get x squared x minus, 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 minus 5x minus 5x minus, minus, minus Good, five. minus 25. The negative has got to go through the whole thing. Oh, it's in the wrong place. Yeah, you need a what over here? Because that square, if that square wasn't there, you wouldn't do that. You would just solve for x directly. But because that's squared, you need the different way to solve it. Subtract the 14, put your like terms together. Very few ways to factor 39, so that's useful. Yep, x equals 13. Negative 3, cool. Did that freak out anybody? The only numbers that would freak this out is R. That confused me a little bit. Negative, oh, negative, negative five and five? No, dude. Okay. All right. I didn't ask about freaking you out. I asked about freaking the problem out. Yes? So, Johnny Thomas, like, sir. I totally did. You'll be <laughs> you will get over it so quickly. What's up? Okay, so when it's um, squared. I had to put a sticker on it. They're fine. Okay. So when it's um, 
zero? Yeah, because if that squared term wasn't there, I could just put these together and divide by the coefficient. But because that x squared is there, all my x terms are not like terms. Okay. So I can't get a single x term and then divide by the coefficient. Does that make sense? Right. Cool. So when there's a higher power in the x, that could mean I need to make it equal to zero. But the other one we don't have to. Yeah, this one, there was no x squared terms. Okay. So I can get all my x's together in one place, and what was really nice is it was just one, so I'd have to divide by it. Okay, good. How do you feel so far? I mean, that's there are elements to this that feel very much like the other stuff. You, you make the bottoms the same, you can then kill them because it's an equation, and then you end up with the, what should be a relatively easy equation after that. Um, what, what's, let's see here, here's the, uh, oh, no, I'll do that later. here's the um, thing to be careful about with these, the problems I've done so far, I could not do the same thing that I could do here. What special thing did I do here? And really, cross multiplication is a shortcut of what we did. If I did cross multiply, how would that work? Three times five, I get fifteen. Not over, carefully. You don't want to lose your equation. You bring something over there, and then something to the other side. Right? You should still have an equation on the next step. Why you oh, I don't know. Because <laughs> you said that and I was thinking the other way. Um, if I did it that way, what's this guy missing? A three. A three. What's this guy missing? Then I can multiply by that. So effectively, that three looks like it just came up there. And that x minus one looks like it just came up there. That's not what they did. Algebra doesn't say, you can just pick that up and put it up. But that's what would happen if I did that whole process. So cross multiplication is a shortcut that only works when I have one fraction equals one fraction. So I could not have done any cross multiplication here. You'd be like, this guy crosses to this and then over. No, screw that. Just, I, only, I need one fraction equals one fraction with me. The reason I'm making a big deal out of that is because the minute people learn cross multiplication, you try to do it everywhere because it's easy. But it's easy because it only works in certain places. Right? That's why it's allowed to be easy. Um, and then this would be easy to finish out. Blah, 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 just to finish it out. Cool. Right. You with me? Yeah. All right. Now here's where cross multiplication actually gets you in trouble. Just cross multiply directly, you're going to make a much more complicated problem than you have to. Do you notice how on this problem these bottoms had nothing to do with each other? So they didn't need each other, right? Uh -huh. Whereas here, how do you factor this? X plus one. And how do you factor this? No, you just take x out. Careful. X, x, x minus 1. That's the most, not to pick on whoever said that. That's so easy to do, but there's only two terms here, and it's not a squares or a cube, so it's, it's got to be GCF. You always try GCF first, just to save yourself from that. Um, so don't they have an x minus 1 in common? Yep. So neither one of them needs an x minus 1, but if you multiply this up and you multiply that up, you're effectively saying they both needed an x minus 1. That's not true. So if you just blindly cross multiply, you actually end up blindly cross multiply. You end up with uh, 4x squared minus 4 equals 3x squared minus 3x. You have squares in there, so then you have to factor and set it equal to 0 and all this kind of bullshit. 
totally unnecessary. Right? So what does this guy actually need? X, X1 plus 1. Yeah, this guy just needs an X plus 1. And this guy just needs a X. So then I can multiply by the, the LCD, and all that stuff goes away, and I end up with 4X plus 4. Now, you see that? You understand what I'm saying? So not only should you cross multiply only when you have, not only do you not want to use it, how do you put that grammatically together? I don't know English. Not only should you not use it too often, you shouldn't even use it in the case where it looks like it's exactly set up for it because this is too much, you, you get much more complicated than you need to, right? So you really kind of should carefully say, this is quick, they have nothing in common, cross multiplication, beautiful. This one, if they have something in common, don't just blindly cross multiply. Give them what they're missing, you'll get a much simpler equation, right? And then to finish this out, Good, subtract 3x, subtract 4. x plus 4. Negative. Negative. Right, subtract the 4 over. Right? Cool. How are we doing? Good. So cross multiplication, completely fine to do as long as you do it in the right place. And even if you do it in the right place, sort of, you're actually making more complicated. That actually would end up with this answer. But it would, now let, let's actually finish this out. Subtract 3x squared. Add 3x. Guys, you with me? How do you factor this? So negative four plus one is four. Negative four or one? But it can't equal one. So you made a much more complicated problem because you had this extra bit that's not even allowed. You kind of with so when you do it much more precision. Wise, then you don't even include that extra answer. You don't, you don't get the extra answer. Here you got to know to even throw that out. So just opening yourself up to all these mistakes. How do you feel so far? Decent? So let me give you one to try totally on your own here. Let's see. So let me give you two. Um, Jessica Wynn, are you here? Jessica Wynn? No. Will Wheaton? No.
mistake people make on this first one is on the next line, somehow that's still a one. So if you have that, something will wrong. You can't change, you can't do something to one side and not do it to the other side. Just because it's not a fraction doesn't mean you have to, you can let him escape. So take this whole thing over? Yeah. Sure. You can do that. It wouldn't really change it too much, though, to be honest. So you put T minus 3, T plus 3 on the bottom. Okay. So what's currently under the one? One. Right? What's he need? What's he need? Both of them. I like it. And again, uh, you could combine these and then like cross multiply with the one over one. I mean, there are other ways to do this. And I am not gonna try to show you all the ways. All right, I might try to show you a couple ways. Uh, this is the way I personally would do this. Because now I can just, what can I do now? Yeah, kill all the bottoms and multiply by the LCD. Bam, 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 bam. So then I get This different. It's just that if there's a whole number sitting there, you know it's over one. It's missing everything automatically. You got to give it everything. You with me? So if there's a whole number, it's just going to take everything. Um, what do I have to do now? Equal After zero. I zero. yeah, suck all this stuff over. So t squared. Uh, 15 minus 30 is negative 15. Add 15, I get six. Is that right? I did a lot. Yeah. And then subtract 5t. So you should end up with that once you move everything over. And how do you factor that? Negative 3, negative 2. Okay, cool. But you guys doing alright? The problem is you can't be one. What's up? Yeah, I got negative 21. All right, so let me show a little mental steps here real quick. All right, so you get 5t minus 15, right? When you put those together, then you add 15, subtract 5t, you get t squared minus 5t, negative 9 plus 15 is positive 6. everything the other way? Yeah. Then you end up with a negative t squared, and I always force it to not be negative. If it's a negative t squared, that sucks, because then it's not a 1 out front. It's a negative 1. So then you actually have to take it into account. You with me? Yeah. So if I know I'm going to end up with t squares, I'm going to move it so that they stay positive. I'm not going to move it so that they become negative. You guys with me? Does it become more complicated? Yes, because anytime the first number is not 1, and negative one is not one, then it's more complicated. Yeah, because I switch. I have to switch to square. Good. That's why. Yeah. But if you call negative one, um, the answer is the same. Good. Okay. But you have to pull it out. I'd rather just move everything in the first place and leave it positive. Yeah. I still got the t squared. I got the t squared minus nine, and then you got t minus three t plus three. Right. You have to get that. Good. Then what happened now? How did you get this? So this guy needed, what did he need? No, no, I know, I got that, but he canceled all the LCD. But here we got 5t plus 15. Yeah, so 5t plus 15. Right, minus 30. Good. I got that. And uh, how did you get it? Equals. Because what did the 1 need? 
This is one over one. So what did he need? He needed everything on the top soil. Yeah. So when he canceled the bottoms, he still got all the stuff there on the top. Yeah, I just did not see that. Okay, how we do it so far? So you have 5t plus 15 minus 30 equals t squared minus 9. I mean, you swing everything over to the right side? Good. Okay. And, and so it would be 0 equals that, but that means that that equals 0. So you solve for 15 minus 30, negative 15, and you put plus 9 because you're transferring it. Plus 15 over, yeah. Because you're switching the sign because you're switching it? Just because I'm making it cancel here. Okay. Yeah. So you get 6, and so you set it up t squared minus 5t plus 6. Good, because I have to subtract 5t to make it cancel. So all this side becomes 0 okay. equals this side, and I just wrote it the more the way that I'm more used to, right? Okay. If 0 equals that, then that equals 0. How are we doing so far? And again, that's something that I would expect all you guys to be able to just move everything over. And if I don't do it the same way you would, or if I skip some steps, you should still be able to do it. The new stuff was here. The minute we do this first step, this is old stuff, right? And I'm going to go through that a little bit quicker because it is older stuff. And, and what do I do here now? Factor. Yep. So t equals good, right? We get to two answers from this, but then we go, oh crap. 3 would make this freak out, so it can't be 3. Now, real quick, uh, I want to address this because this is really this is one of those other little things that are like, they add up. Math told me the answer is 3, and you just said, no, the answer is not 3. So screw that. Right? This is why you shouldn't say it. We did something that was illegal. We just didn't know it at the time. What did we multiply both sides by? The LCD. We multiply by this. If T is 3... What did we multiply by? Zero. zero. Are you allowed to multiply both sides of an equation by zero? No. No. So math is actually being really nice. It allowed us to do that because we didn't know it was zero. And so I got here, math says, dude, that was zero. And then we, oh shit. <laughs> right? T can't be three. So we did something that was illegal, but we didn't know it until we got to the end. And we're like, oh, thanks, Matt. Thanks for being nice about that. <laughs> you guys kind of with me? And but I don't totally understand why. Because I remember when I first learned this, I'm like, it gave us answers that weren't right. What the hell? Right? <laughs> we learned this freaky ass shit, and then we get to the end, and then some of them might be wrong. That's, ah. So I understand how you guys might feel sort of the same way. But again, that's just math being really nice, actually. We didn't know we did something wrong. Illegal. Yeah. Um, I don't understand why you like, if you can cancel out. Um, because if math is saying, if I could do this, then t could be 3. But if t is 3, this would be 0, of course. t equal to 3 makes this thing freak out. You with me? So if t is 3, I multiply by 0 on both sides. I'm not allowed to multiply. If you did that, every equation would be 0 equals 0. We would be living in caves. <laughs> right? Wouldn't be good. There'd be no iPhones, no droids, no Pinterest. How are we doing so far? Is that cool? Yes. Good? So you might actually sometimes get both answers that aren't good. You might get both answers that aren't good. You might get one of them not good. Whatever. You just got to check it. Make sure that they don't freak it out. Um, oh, what about this guy? Good. Nothing in common here. So I just go ahead and cross multiply. N squared plus, plus N plus 2N. Yeah, and N. I got you. And then when you foil this out, are you guys with me? Yeah. Just multiply that out, multiply that out. I'm going to foil those out. Plus 2n minus 3n. Minus n squared minus, minus n. n minus 6. I like it. Of course, what's really nice there about the higher power variables, you can cancel them out. Cancel. They die. Subtract n squared, they're gone. So then I can add n, subtract 1. Seven divided by three. Good. Divided by three. And equals negative seven thirds. Is that okay? Yes. Because the only ones that would freak it out are negative one and negative two. Cool. 
Okay, some of you guys look dejected. I'm sorry. Yeah. Some of you guys look angry. Yeah, sorry. Very good. All right. As long as nobody beats me up on the way to the car, I'll be all right. Okay, so let's see. Um, somebody really would have wanted me to get into 7-7, but I don't think I will. It's too bad. Um, sorry. <laughs> Just a little too much to get into at the right at the tail end of class. 7-7, uh, like I said earlier, is our word problem, our rational expression word problem section. Oh, man. <laughs> Yummy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, how, that's where most of these come from, like miles per hour. That's a ratio. Yeah. I'm going to go back to my geometry. If it works, it does. All right, guys, that's all I got. I'll have the quiz graded tomorrow. All right. I'll